Well, back in May, the Monitor's Mark Wildman traveled to Watkinsville to spotlight a UGA study that is using clover to provide corn the nitrogen it needs to grow. Yeah, Ray, and as a follow-up to that, Mark recently traveled to Floyd County to spotlight the same research on a different test plot. Nick Hill is walking through some very tall corn on his research plot at the Northwest Georgia Branch Experiment Station in Floyd County. And it got this tall without fertilizer. And what you can see is there are two silking ears here and there's a third ear that's developing down here. This plant would not develop that kind of corn ear uh, um, on the stalk if it were under nitrogen deficiencies. To find the secret, you just have to look down. This hybrid variety of clover is a living mulch and is at the center of Dr. Nick Hill's study that can potentially save farmers big bucks. Last year out here, we had uh, 236 bushels without any nitrogen application whatsoever. The cost of production on that was $2.17 a bushel. I calculated up the cost of production on the conventional corn that we grew last year as being $3.84 a bushel. The hybrid variety of clover is called Durana and was developed by the University of Georgia and can be purchased from Pennington Seed Company. The clover here is only three years old, and besides providing plenty of nitrogen, research is finding the use of herbicides are greatly reduced as well, because the band size is much smaller than conventional techniques. Many different tools are used to track the results of the study, and results of the trials are passed on to producers to use the information. In this particular study, it's very important for us to understand the dynamic between the corn and the clover so that we can get this system perpetuate itself as best as we possibly can. So what we're doing is we're measuring the height of the corn, uh, we're measuring the mass of the clover underneath the corn. We can determine by loss of clover mass how much nitrogen is coming to the soil surface and then predict how much of that is going to go into the corn. Um, we'll know a little bit about how tall the corn is when it starts imposing its stress on the clover. One of the most beneficial aspects of the clover is the amount of organic matter it puts around the crop. It acts like a mulch and keeps uh, moisture in the soil and also acts as a weed suppressor. So uh, uh, we have a tendency to have better control of weeds. Uh, even though we have to use herbicides, we still have a pretty good control of weed populations in here just from uh, the, the mulch that's here. And you can see, uh, if I pull this back, the amount of organic matter that's just sitting right here on the soil surface. And you probably can't pick up on it, but there's all sorts of little insects crawling around down in here. Um, and, and they're probably doing some things in terms of uh, controlling other harmful insects that might uh, invade this area down here. So, But look at that organic matter. There's about, a, about an inch of organic matter setting on top of that soil surface and with time that will go down into the soil incorporate down into the soil and it just becomes a soil building process. Even though the results look promising the research is still in the early stages. Two years is not really enough to give you a trend that gives you two data points and uh, uh, you know we like to see trend over three year four year periods. It all seems so simple but if this research keeps getting good results you might be seeing a lot more green clover in cornfields around Georgia. Reporting for the Georgia Farm Monitor, I'm Mark Wildman.